Okay, it's been a while, um, but I've got myself a trial version of Alias, and I thought I'd do, based on the Renault Trezor, some hexagonal surfacing using the conformer tool. So I've just created this uh, surface, and I'm going to try and project a pattern all over this surface. So I've got a circle here at the back, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this circle out uh, so it looks like a hexagon. And because I've used a revolve tool, it's going to be dished. So the, each hexagon will be concave. Okay, so I'm going to um, pick the surface. Well, for some reason, I've got two surfaces there. Um, okay, delete that. So I'm going to pick the surface. I'm going to project. Where is the project? I'm going to project the hexagon. Hexagon. Uh, where's project? Just looking for project. Right there you go. So this is going to be in the Z, and then just going to no, no, done that. Just need to uh, trim. So I'm just going to click on the arrow I want to keep, and then just click keep, and then what? Simple as that. Now what we need to do is we need to create a pattern to then project that pattern of surfaces onto another surface. So uh, I'm just looking for the conform rig tool. Um, things. Right, there we are. Conform rig. That's the one you want. So it brings up this box. Um, the first box is all about aligning the surface to another. So, what we're going to do? Just got to create the pattern now. Um, so I'm going to array the surface that I've created, and then it's the actual array that will be projected. So I'm just going to um, top in some values and see what it comes up with. So you can see um, that pattern has no offset. So I can change the offset selective. And it's just what I'm going to do now is just going to tweak the um, values between the spacing and the offset to make sure the pattern is how I want it to be. And axis one will be X and axis two will be Y, I think. 
So it's just a bit of trial and error, just typing in a number to um, get the right spacing. So 57 seems to be good in one direction, but it's not the same. Uh, this is because as well that from the center of the objects in one direction it ends on a point and the other direction it ends on a, sh a straight edge so the distance between those two points is different um, so I'm just trial and error In hindsight, I should have just measured it <laughs> for whatever reason I didn't. Um, that's a 69 is kind of close in that direction. And 60s, they've got a little bit of an overlap. And the more precise you can be with this. Um, the more precise these surfaces will turn out, as in when this is projected onto your main surface that you want to go over, you won't have any gaps in between each one. The alternative way, instead of using the array tool, you could um, duplicate each surface manually and snap it to each corner manually and say do five and then do five and five and as I'm doing here. but here because I'm using the array tool there's actually a gap in between each surface but it's just quicker to use the array tool to get you an idea so if that's the pattern I'm happy with I'm just going to um, try and get as many surfaces as possible And this way, this will give me um, the best coverage, hopefully, over that surface. So once you're happy and you've got the surface pattern that you want, in this case, hexagons, So I'm just going to move the surfaces out of the way so it's easy to select the other surfaces. So it's, I think we select the surface, accept targets. So this is the, the target that you want to project all your other surfaces over. And I was kind of hoping this would come as like a good, oh it will, yeah, good project, cool. Um, what have I done? Have you been doing that? So that's the object lister, it's kind of like layers in Photoshop, so I'm just going to um, assign the original surface its own layer so I literally should just have the pattern and the target surface I've got two so let's get rid of one of them I've got okay, etc 
set targets. Try again. Thinking. All right, that didn't work out the way I expected it to. I think what I've done is selected the wrong surface. So try again. Set the pattern first. And then that's it, and accept. I think it's quite alright, okay, that looks better. There's a lot of resolves there, revolves there. This is one thing to be wary about, is the um, sheer number of surfaces. So you can see what it's trying to do there. It's as if you extended the original surface, it's kind of just continued the curvature of that surface. So now I'm hoping I can literally just uh, play around with it, and scale it, and so on. So there's a, a, a small dot on the surface where you can see it's positioned the pattern. And in the bottom of my screen, you can see there's options for how to rotate, scale, and move. Let's give this a go. I was concerned there's, um, there's an awful lot of surfaces, so it might take quite a while to compute all this. Okay, so I literally just clicked and dragged, um, and it's obviously taking quite a while to compute those 1500 uh, hexagons. So it's quite intensive. I assume the preview there you can see it's kind of gone too small for that surface but yeah let's give it time to um, do it trying to um, scale it again so it covers the whole surface but not as much as what I've scaled it down so unfortunately it's going to take a similar sort of time to um, scale up again so you can click on that green dot if you want to just reposition it and it should move across the, the actual surface that you project your pattern onto. Okay, let's get some really uh, intense computing. Yeah, it moved the tiny little bit then. I'm just going to try clicking on this uh, contact to see if it gives me a widget so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, 
just going to commit to that. And there we go. Now bear in mind, you'll have to trim and blend and fill it and fill any holes this may have. But either way, you've got to expect that if you're going to cut a random pattern into a normal surface. So let's just get rid of um, all the unwanted surfaces for now. Let's just um, assign them to there and sort of get rid of all that viewport. Right. Oh, you can see there, I've missed one of the hexagons. I think that's the original hexagon that created the pattern as a whole. So bear in mind, you might have to select that original one for whatever reason. I didn't, but be wary of that. But there you have it. So by having that um, concave dish to the surface of the, each hexagon, you get these nice highlights and shadows in between each thing. I suppose if you had it flat, and there's a flat spot for every hexagon as it bends over a surface, you're going to achieve something fairly similar. Um, but let's just try and assign the material to these, just so you can see what it looks like with a, a paint finish or something on there. I'm just going to make this bigger because I can't see anything in there. There we go, that's better. Right, paint. Toggle model. So you can see, because the, the original pattern had a gap and it wasn't perfectly aligned, there is some tiny gaps, but like I said at the beginning, if you were to manually create the pattern and snap each hexagon together at the corner, you can get rid of that gap. Um, but for the purpose of showing you how you go ahead and create this Renault Trezor sort of surfacing, um, I think it gives you the idea how you can achieve that. And yeah. Be aware that original surface needs to be selected, otherwise you can have a hole. Uh, let's see what it looks like in a another hydrolyte. Okay, I'll leave it at that.